how's it going everybody it is the next day and you can see here we've got the template all made up everything looks good no issues curves all made perfectly and I did just pop it off so it is kind of hanging down let's take a look here and you'll see as I'm moving it here it's actually still pretty pretty rigid set it down like that and just made sure I glued as much as I could so as I'm moving it I'm making sure it stays in its original shape all right and so as you can imagine we're actually ready to start tracing this on some marine grade plywood let me take you over to my bench and show you the wood tell you a little bit about it and then we'll lay the template on it as well and kind of talk about it all in one shot all right so take a look at this this is referred to as hydrotech you may have heard me say aquatech or marine grade plywood it's all pretty much the same it, the whole idea is you want something that if it does get in contact with water it's going to be able to hold its shape pretty well so here's a pretty cool screenshot here it says marine grade plywood hydrotech b8 and i believe that's like 1088 and it's got a little dragon in the middle all right and you can see here there are a ton of cores the veneer on this is just absolutely awesome looking super high quality and as you can imagine you get what you pay for this slice this four by eight runs about 150 dollars a sheet so like i said it's it's the best i've got pieces of this same plywood this hydrotech also aquatech sitting in the yard just leftover pieces that have been out there for probably about a year or two maybe even longer and it stays the same shape this it doesn't expand doesn't transform in, in, in the shape or anything it just stays as a uh, piece of plywood on the ground so it's actually really neat really great if you're gonna build a boat make sure you use this product okay so you can see we got our template laid out on the plywood nothing crazy you want to try to maximize as much of the wood as you can so by doing so what you'll want to do is try to bring it the very bottom where the drain hole is in that angle and then also like that over there so it just kind of allows you to maximize the amount of plywood you're using versus just putting it right in the middle now you'll see I've got some scotch tape, basically just like cheap painter's tape. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape some of these corners up so I can start tracing this onto the wood. And keep in mind, this is a three quarter inch piece that I'm gonna use for the uh, first cut. Okay, so you can see those little braces that we made also double as a way to hold the template down so it doesn't move as you're tracing it. All right, so I've actually completed my trace marks all the way around. And like I said, this this isn't necessarily going to be a perfect science when you go to trace it, so don't don't get too crazy about like, you know, like this for example, trying to figure out how you're going to go around there because we're going to end up sand, sanding a lot of these edges to make them nice and smooth. So as you're going through and, and tracing, just keep that in mind. We just we want the overall shape, but also you know do your due diligence when you're um, tracing this out. Yeah. So this, the bad thing about this process is you only get one sheet of plywood per transom. So keep that in mind if you do happen to mess up during this tracing process. And like I said, it's, it's kind of hard to mess this up. You, you can actually fill in a lot with the, the peanut butter material, as we'll talk about later on, if, if you need to. But just make sure you, you take your time on this process, because like I said, if you ruin a $150 sheet of marine grade plywood, you're going to be very upset with yourself. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and carefully remove all this tape, because I actually reuse the template for, for all three. I don't just use the one 
that I'm gonna cut here as the template for the other two. I like to keep this as my, my baseline. So I'm gonna keep this template in a nice safe place. And let's move this out of the way. And you can see very lightly with the pen mark. Yeah, mostly right, right there in the light. So what we're gonna do next is we are gonna get the jigsaw out and we're gonna start cutting this. All right, so I got my jigsaw ready. Put a fresh blade on there. And we're just gonna go ahead and start cutting. I moved, moved it over a little bit so it doesn't get, the blade doesn't run up against the uh, jack stands here. So without further ado, I will go ahead and start cutting and we'll get this first three quarter inch sheet cut out. Okay, got a few parts of it cut out. Now you'll see, I've got another video where I talk about this some more. Just make sure when you go to try to make this turn here, because they tend to be like a, almost like a perpendicular turn, you want to get a drill bit and drill right here so you're not cutting into your uh, transom. All right, we are getting closer to this being complete. So once we get this cut out, we're gonna do a test fit. So I'm gonna make a few more cuts and we'll get this thing removed. All right, take a look. Completely cut out, nothing crazy. Just follow the template and make your cuts accordingly. So before we make the pot, or we take the possibility of ruining two more sheets, as I said a little bit ago, is we're gonna take this back into the boat and just do a quick test fit. Make sure it's gonna fit properly because technically, this little piece right here is $150. So you're gonna put this much effort into rebuilding a transom. It's a, quite the pricey mistake to make one $150 mistake, but if you make two more, ouch. So anyway, let's go ahead and take this and put it back into the boat and see how it fits. All right, tell you what, fits really nice. So you can see I put some popsicle sticks to simulate the one inch gap underneath. Some of the things you want to pay attention to is obviously do we have this gap that I was trying to achieve up here? The answer is yes. You want to make sure your sides are good. Which we're good there. Make sure up here is good along the edge. We've got a nice little gap around there. You want that gap, you'll see later on when we're making the connection. We wanna have that enough sufficient gap so we've got a good bond. All right, and then in here, we kind of talked about that a little while ago, a few vi videos ago, where we're gonna fill this in and make it nice and level. All right, let's stand back a little bit, take a quicker look. All right, people, this is your first look. So I'm gonna say this is good. I like what I see. All right, so let's go ahead and make two more cuts. And as I mentioned before, this is not gonna be the template for the other two. We're gonna use the same template again. We're just gonna double, uh, do it two times. And then if there's any variation between the two, should be very little. Last time I did this, it wasn't much. We'll go ahead and bond them all together, then we'll we'll make some the appropriate amount of sanding to get everything perfectly true. All right, so I hope you like how it looks so far. Let's cut those other two. All right, so this is our quarter inch sheet. The veneer and the cores on this are really impressive. This sheet right here was only about 50 bucks. So not quite as expensive as the three quarter inch pieces. That's nice. The other thing that's different about this, I believe the other one is Hydrotech. And then this one is made by Aquatech. A little bit different brands, but very good. I believe the type of wood is a little bit different, but it's still really good really good uh, marine grade plywood but yeah typically I'll get either the Aquatech or Hydrotech 
never um, have any issues with it. Another thing to note here is if you look around, you don't see any knots. It's kind of by design. So super high quality plywood. All right, so I'll go ahead and cut this quarter inch uh, sheet out. And we'll move on to the last but not least, three quarter. All right, so there is my quarter inch sheet. You can see it's got a little bit different pattern to it, but it is still really neat to look at. So that's what we got so far. We got one three quarter cut and one quarter inch. And we're gonna cut out the final which is a three quarter, which is right over here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this one on the stand and we will go ahead and get this last one cut out. Okay, got the last sheet here. This is the uh, three quarter. This one is the Hydrotech. All right, so as we did before, let's go ahead and tape it off and we'll get cutting. All right, and that is the third and final cut. Let's stack them all up to be, uh, next to each other and let's see what it looks like. All right, looks pretty nice. I'm gonna sandwich the quarter inch piece between the two three quarters. This way it's got a good solid bond right there. And you can see there we've got a good, nice, solid cutout on all three of these. All right, so what are we gonna do from here? We're gonna start working on bonding these three surfaces together. Now we'll need to obviously lay down a you know bonding surface between these two and then this one right here. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about how we're gonna do that. So let's look at some of the goodies that I got for the bonding process. So this is a thickening agent, uh, agent called uh, Cabasil. It makes the um, epoxy thicker, more like peanut butter. This is where the terminology comes that I call it peanut butter because once everything's mixed up, that's kind of what it looks like. And then what I've used in the past is resin, uh, polyester resin. This time we're going to use 635 epoxy resin. It's a two-part mix. You saw, it's either part one or part two. And here's the hardener that goes along with it. All right, and you'll see a bunch of little accessories that I got. You can just imagine you can never have enough mixing containers. I'll tell you what, we've got our special little scissors. And the reason why we got those special little scissors is right here. We are using Kevlar. So I know I've been saying 1708 throughout the project, but we are actually gonna end up using Kevlar. I like it because it's not as itchy as messing around with the uh, 1708 fiberglass. And there's no videos on all of YouTube that show how to reconstruct a boat, including the transom with Kevlar. So. This is going to be the first that I've seen. So that's a little surprise for you. And just so you are aware, Kevlar is about five times more expensive than just going with fiberglass. So a lot more expensive. And I'd like to do this for you all so you can kind of get an idea how the Kevlar works compared to the 1708. And then, you know, we'll, we'll maybe see how it, it looks and then you can make the, the call based on my prior video. Which one do you think looks better, holds up better? I can tell you one thing, um, the specs on the Kevlar versus the 1708 are, are like night and day different. So obviously the information I got from US Composite says that if you're looking for strength, definitely go with Kevlar. Okay. So that concludes the previews of the materials that we're going to use to bond these surfaces together. Stay tuned for the next episode. If you're not already, definitely subscribe to the video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments field below. And look forward to the next video where we bond these surfaces together. Have a good one, everybody. We'll see you on the next episode.